In Yemen, where 80 percent of the population depends on humanitarian aid, the United States, Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates have all slashed aid to the country. This comes as the U.S.-backed Saudi-led coalition continues to bomb Yemen, where millions face hunger, disease and extreme poverty in what's been called the worst humanitarian crisis in the world even before the pandemic. When the war launched five years ago, the U.S. backed the Saudi-led invasion after the Houthis overthrew the legitimately, the legitimate uh, internationally recognized government of President Abdurrahman Mansour Hadi. What complicated the issue is even after the Obama administration found that the Saudis and the coalition were not taking into account the impact on civilians of the, their deployment of U.S. weaponry, and they suspended it. When, when the Trump administration came in, they immediately overturned that suspension. So there is there was a foreknowledge of, of, of the involvement and the impact and the ways that U.S. support um, in, entrenched this conflict. But for years now, we've seen another pattern start to come together, which is not only is the U.S. profiting from the war by selling weapons to the UAE and Saudi Arabia, who are both partner, partners in the coalition, they also, the inspector general uh, who was forced out from the State Department found, continuing to not take into account the impact on civilians of that deployment of U.S. armaments by the UAE and by Saudi Arabia. It's even wrong to say the Gulf states have turned away from Yemen. They have not turned away from Yemen. They are constantly bombing Yemen. In fact, on Tuesday, President Trump stood with the foreign minister of the United Arab Emirates. Um, uh, and, of course, we know Saudi Arabia leads the bombing pr bombs provided by the United States. And part of the deal didn't actually have to do with the Palestinians that was signed off on at the White House. It had to do with the United States selling the UAE F-35 fighter bombers. Can you talk about the significance of, once again, these weapons deals to hunger and the devastation of Yemen? Well, it sends a message, doesn't it? It sends a message, not just in Yemen, but it sends a message around the world that you can do what you want to do as long as you as long as you sign up for our key concerns. And a, a, a number of U.S. diplomats have described to me conversations that they've had with the UAE and with Saudi Arabia. And, and essentially, the, con the subtext of the conversation was, well, we have signed, the UAE has signed a peace deal with, with Israel. And we know that this is a key priority for the Trump administration. So what more do you want from us? What we know about Yemen is that Yemen it was a national security risk for the United States. It, it was home to the most effective franchise of al-Qaeda, al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, who, who at one point got very far in a plot to put a, a bomb on a plane and send it to the United States. That was always given as the excuse for the reason why the United States need to continue to be engaged in Yemen. What has happened with uh, allowing key U.S. allies like the UAE and Saudi Arabia to do what they have done in Yemen is that this, this hunger and this conflict has allowed not just al-Qaeda, but ISIS to become resurgent in Yemen again. Just this last week, there were a, a number of pretty effective ISIS and al-Qaeda attacks. The U.S. is, is measurably less safe because of what, his, what their allies have done in Yemen. But one of the things that, that is really interesting that so many of us that are covering foreign affairs are looking at really closely is that the, the ICC, the International Criminal Court, has now said that the chief prosecutor, Fatou Bensouda, can begin to look into U.S. war crimes in Afghanistan. And that is, that is precedent setting. Because given what the, what the IG report, the unredacted version, shows about the U.S.'s disregard for civilian casualties perpetrated by their allies with their bombs. There is a real conversation that is beginning about whether the U.S. is opening itself up for further cases of war crime prosecution on Yemen. And it's a pretty credible case that is being discussed. And yet, any time that you bring this formally and on record to the State Department or to Trump administration officials, they say, 
well, this is about American manufacturers, about American workers uh, being able to make money out of American bombs being dropped in Yemen. And what we have seen with the engagement that we have found, not just for this piece, but also for the previous investigations that we've done is actually, and actually I take heart from this, is that so many of our audience, whether it's in America or around the world, don't believe that. They don't believe that, that money should be made over the deaths of innocent civilians halfway around the world in a country that was already a humanitarian disaster, even before this ill-thought-through intervention.